got another batch of past exam questions on enthalpy and entropy. So if you want to have a go at these, the link to the questions in the description of the video, just click on that and then play the video when you want the answers. Okay, so question one starts off nice and easy with a dot and cross diagram for the bonding in CaCl2 showing outer electrons only. You can see I've written up it's ionic, metal and non-metal. So we can represent the calcium 2 plus ion like that. Or if you wanted to, just leave that empty and we draw two separate chloride ions. What's meant by the term enthalpy change of solution? It's the enthalpy change when one mole of a substance dissolves completely in water. Add the species present on the three dotted lines. Don't forget your state symbols. So we've been given that. So that's the solid lattice. The lattice enthalpy goes from gaseous ions to the solid ionic lattice. So the gaseous ions go up there. This is the enthalpy change of solution. So we have aqueous ions at the bottom there. And then these two steps here are the hydration enthalpies for the ions. So you can see I've hydrated the calcium 2 plus first. So that would be that arrow. And then here I've gone for the two chloride ions hydrations. Next thing we've got to do is calculate the enthalpy change of solution of CaCl2. So that's the unknown thing there. So I'm going to put in the lattice enthalpy, minus 2192, and the hydration enthalpy. So the first, my first arrow is for the hydration of the calcium ions. So your minus 1616 goes there. And the chloride ions, it's minus 359 per mole. So it'll be minus 359 times 2. And then just some basic Hess's law. So they equal those. So if we wanted to have that on its own, we would have the sum of those minus that one. So there's the numbers in there. And the answer was minus 142. We've now got to explain the differences between the enthalpy changes of hydration from the table. So I've starred the uh, aluminium the magnesium and the sodium ions in blue because we can use those to show the effect of ionic charge because obviously that's one plus two plus three plus and then the other factor that um, affects hydration enthalpy is the ionic not atomic the ionic radius so you've got two two plus ions in there so we can compare their ionic radius with their enthalpy change of hydration so ionic charge first, so the, these ions show that as the charge increases, the enthalpy change of hydration gets more exothermic, and that's due to the increasingly stronger attraction between the ions and the water molecules. And then just the ionic radius, the Mg2 plus and Ca2 plus ions show that as the ionic radius, not atomic radius, I see that quite a lot unfortunately, as the ionic radius decreases, the enthalpy change of hydration gets more exothermic. Smaller ions attract water molecules more strongly. So moving on to the calculation now. First thing I've got to do is calculate the enthalpy change of solution in kilojoules per mole for calcium chloride. Got to give our answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So straight away, looking at the data there, we've got four significant figures and then three significant figures. So the appropriate number will be three because the temperature is only the three. So first thing we need to do is extract the mass of calcium chloride used. So that's 5.56 grams from the difference between those two. The mass of the solution in the cup is the difference between those two. So that's 50.21 grams. And the change in temperature is the difference between those two, 31.5 degrees C. So it's a calorimetry um, calculation. So the first thing we do is Q equals MC delta T. So M, 50.21, not that mass. That's a common mistake. People use the wrong mass. We're going to use that to calculate the moles of calcium chloride. It's the mass of the thing in the cup that goes into the equation for M. So MC delta T gives us 6611.1507 joules. We're then going to calculate the moles of calcium chloride used. So mass over MR. So that 5.56 over the MR of CaCl2 is that. So that gives us that many moles. So the delta H 
is the Q value in kilojoules, because we're going to give our answer in kilojoules per mole, the Q value in kilojoules divided by the moles, 132, but it needs a minus sign because it's exothermic. How do we know it's exothermic? Because the solution got hotter. Next part, student two carries out the same experiment, uses twice the mass of CaCl2. All of the other quantities were very similar to student one. Predict any differences between temperature change and the calculated value of delta H sol. Explain your reasons. So, temperature change will double because they're using twice the mass of the chemical in the same quantity of water. So, the temperature change will double. So, that's going to double Q. So, obviously, if you've got twice the number there, that value will double. However, because they've used double the mass of calcium chloride, the moles will double as well. So when you do the Q, that's two times bigger, but that's two times bigger than the other student. The ratio is the same. So the enthalpy change of solution will be the same. So moving on to question two now, I think the first part of this is blooming awful. Um, one mark for this, I think is a joke, but anyway, here we go. So the trick for this really is the fact that you've got two moles of SO2 made in the first step. And then it says for step two, the remaining HRS is reacted with the SO2 to produce sulfur. Now, there's only one mole of SO2 here. So that needs to be reacted. So if we double this equation out and then add them together, and then we can cancel down. So when you do that, when you double that one and add it to that, you get this blue equation here. And then you can see you can cancel out the SO2s. And then you've got a ratio of 6 to 3 to 6 to 6 of what's left. So if you divide everything by 3, you get 2 to 1 to 2 to 2. And that was the answer. So very, very well done if you got that one right. Right, so moving on to the next part of the question. It's fairly typical delta G calculation. So calculate delta G at 25 degrees C. Um, decide whether step 2 is feasible at that temperature and then work out the temperature at which the feasibility changes. Okay, so the first thing, calculate delta G at 25 degrees C. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Well, we know the delta H, there it is there. Temperature is 25 degrees C. Delta S we don't know, but we've got all these standard entropy values for everything in this equation, so we can work out delta S for that equation. So delta S is the sum of the entropies of the products minus the reactants. I just remember it as SPA, like the shop. So that gives you a delta S value of minus 186.7 joules per Kelvin per mole. Joules per Kelvin per mole. Okay. Now the thing you've got to remember is the um, delta G and the delta H are in kilojoules per mole. So we need to turn this into kilojoules. So delta G equals the delta H minus, the T's got to be in Kelvin, remember, and then that's multiplied, obviously, by the delta S. So we get a delta G value of minus 89.96 kilojoules per mole. And so, therefore, the reaction would be feasible at 25 degrees C because delta G is less than zero, or you can say delta G is negative. For the last part of the question, where we've got to calculate the temperature in Kelvin at which the feasibility changes, we're basically finding the temperature that makes delta G equal to zero. So the Gibbs equation becomes that, and then we just rearrange and sub in the values. So T comes out at 779.9 Kelvin, or you could say 780. So final part of the question now, we've got to calculate the enthalpy change of formation for SO2. So I've just copied out the equation and the table. Notice the SO2 is being greyed out because that's what we've got to calculate. So this value here, this delta H value, can be calculated from this equation. The sum of the enthalpy change of formation of the products minus the sum of the enthalpy change of formation of the reactants. So if you put the numbers in, there's the delta H value. So the sum of the enthalpy change of formation of the products, well the products are 3 moles of sulphur and 2 moles of steam. Well, it's just going to be the 2 moles of steam because sulphur as an element has an uh, enthalpy change of formation of zero. So two times that value for steam minus the products 2H2S and SO2, 2H2S and the unknown is the SO2. And then all you've got to do is solve for that X and you should get minus 296.8.